Tuesday, 8 o'clock, I actually uh, printed out some stuff to talk about tonight, which I rarely do, but man, the Arizona Nationals was absolutely crazy this weekend. Hopefully, Mr. David Metters, good to see you, buddy. Mike Johnson, Scott, Tony. Man, people are just rolling right on in. That's awesome. That is awesome. Ricky, see you in Gainesville soon. Mr. David Patterson. Mr. Ken Carson. How are you, buddy? Hey, we got Jonathan Zimmer in here. That's awesome. Mr. Michael Rutherford. Uh, anyway, guys, Arizona Nationals. Kind of wanted to uh, talk about that. See the dude, Ira, tuned in. Mr. Michael Rutherford, tune in. And, oh, I just realized what... Uh, <laughs> I just realized what Michael Rutherford was talking about. I said, got that shoot fix. I was thinking, shoot, like, oh, I don't know what you was talking about. You mean shoot as in C-H-U-T-E, parachute. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a little minor malfunction we'll talk about here a little bit. I want to talk about the race right quick, then we'll probably go backwards a little bit and kind of talk about uh, kind of what we did for the weekend, but... One thing that was just crazy to me about this whole race weekend was just, it was crazy. I don't know what was going on. Uh, full moon, I don't know exactly what the heck was, was happening, but it was crazy. I, I got Pro Stock up here first. So Pro Stock, we had uh, a red light, Val Smeelan, red lighted against Bo Butner. Okay, he was 001 red. Okay, I, I, I can go with that. Then then you got Kenny Delco, he went red. Then Chris McGahey, he timed out. Now, I did not see this myself, but I was told that he went up, turned the pre-stage on, rolled and rolled and rolled and never got the stage bump. Anyway, he timed out. And of course, Erica, no surprise, she won. Funny car. I mean, funny car was just crazy. I mean, the Duns won, won their first round. They beat Robert Height, smoked the tires right off the get-go. I mean, that's just crazy, you know, it's just wild. And then Matt Hagen, he absolutely rips a big run off, 380-something, 330-something, and just kind of nicked the cone right at the finish line. So that was crazy. Then you go to the, the back to the red light thing. Tim Wilkerson went red. And then Jeff Deal went red. Now jumping over to Top Fuel. Sean Reed went red. Terry McMillan went red. And Steve Torrance wins again. You know what? Matter of fact, while I'm looking at that, Stevie and his daddy had a heck of a race. Stevie went 69-8 and Billy went 69-9. I mean, if you think uh, that ain't a close wreck, close in and team cars set up just the same, I mean, that's just unbelievable. But I don't know what in the heck was going on this weekend with all of the... Uh, all the red lights, it's just wild. I don't, I don't get it. You know, it's, I don't know. I know this, and I, I actually told Sean Reed this, and I talked about it in our hospitality area. I was second pair right behind Sean Reed, and he's racing Doug Kalitta, who's the Iceman, you know. He is unbelievable, you know, and, and you know you got to get up on the wheel when you're racing Doug Kalitta. Ain't no two ways around that, but Man, oh man, Sean freaking hit the gas, then Doug hits the gas, and, and it's one of those things where I'm in the car going, man, don't do that, don't screw that up, because it's so easy to do. You know, a lot of people, especially, you know, if you're just up there watching, you see the tree go, you hit the gas, pretty simple, right? But in the car, you know, things are different. You know, you got uh, 11,000 horsepower sitting behind you, you've got a lot of people that work their tails off to uh, get the car ready to go. And and sometimes it's weird. You know, your brain is telling you, don't hit the gas, but your foot just goes. It's one of those really weird situations where your body does something and your brain really don't want it to do. And you go red. I mean, I've done it. I, it's just part of it. It's kind of how it goes. I mean, you know, same thing with pretty much everybody I just talked about went red. Uh, you know, they weren't necessarily as red as Sean went. Sean just had to go. It was just time to go. And, and that's that that stuff happens. You know, it's just kind of crazy how that works. And But I know this. In the car, when he did that, 
hit the gas. Then I heard Doug hit the gas. It was very obvious something, you know, was really, somebody was either really late or somebody was really early. And obviously in this case, it was a really early. And you're telling yourself, okay, don't do that. But at the same time, you still got to be able to do your job and hit the tree on time. So we raced Sean Langdon. Now I'm absolutely going backwards. I hadn't talked about our weekend leading into that at all. But anyway, I raced Sean Langdon. You know, he's returning from from funny cars to dragsters, but he's certainly no dummy. You know, the guy's a world champion, not only in a top fuel car, but also in a super comp car. The guy bracket races all the time. He's a bad dude behind the wheel. So we go down through there. We had a good race. We went 375, 321 or something like that. And he went 371 and he beat us. You know, we just plain and simply, we got outran. But both of us, we get out of the car and, you know, kind of give each other the thumbs up. And he walks over and he's like, man, all I could think about was not going red. And I'm like, me too. You know, it's just weird. You know, and that's what, that's kind of what happens. And, you know, you get into that mentality of, man, I don't care what happens, but it's still, when you hear that, it is just one of those things that gets in your head. And I see Buggy just said, yeah, sometimes you got to go. And Buggy knows he didn't see me do it a lot, but he's seen me do it. And, you know, truth is that, Guys can't really get too mad at the driver because it is just one of those things. When it is time to go, it's time to go. And, and you just got to think, well, the, the tree just didn't come on when it was supposed to. But, you know, it's, uh, it's just wild. But Stevie did, you know, didn't come to Pomona and comes out there and, and pretty much put a whooping on everybody. You know, he, uh, he did. You know, him and Billy both ran good. No surprise. You know, it was cool. We had a, a good full field. And, you know, Scott Palmer was back out there. You know, full fields are good things. You know, you can't you can't just lay up and, and depend on qualifying when there's full fields. And but it was it was a crazy weekend. So Friday, you know, we go out there. Um, ended up, I don't even remember. I am the world's worst at remembering. That's that's why I printed out who red lighted and all that stuff because I couldn't remember. But we ended up qualifying. You know, number ten, and we went three seventy five on that or seventy seven on that run. But you know, it's it rained on Saturday. Man, the rain. I don't know how many of y'all been to the racetrack, but the rain at the race is just absolutely makes for a long day. You know, it it's hard to uh, to expect people to come out, but yet we still had a ton of people there. We had a big, huge crowd in our hospitality area, but it was uh, a long rainy day, and you know, I was pretty convinced we were not going to make a run, but we ended up getting a run in Saturday around four o'clock in the afternoon. And, but the place was packed on Sunday. It was a good crowd, good turnout. But it's, it's get, that's another one of those things that you get, uh, you know, you fly from, from here, from Drummond's, Memphis, and it's cold, rainy. You go all the way to Phoenix, Arizona, it's desert, and you think, well, you know, it's gonna be nice and everything will be great. And it rains and it makes it just really, really, poor long day, it's crazy. But Monday, I actually uh, had a late flight out. Uh, Chris Minipace, our car chief, and he is just an amazing young guy that that has his own top dragster car. It's actually an old uh, Darian and Meadows car. Darian Meadows car used to be a you know a blown out called dragster, and we. Uh, we knew he's been busting his butt all winter long working on this thing. He front hafted. He's done all kinds of stuff. It's got a, it's got a basically a blown alcohol dragster set up with just some older cylinder heads and things on it. And he pulled that stuff. Molly Borman, love you. Uh, we've been thinking about you guys. I'm going to get back to my story right quick. So, uh, Chris drugged the car from Brownsburg, Indiana, where he lives at, you know, all the way out to Phoenix. And he was going to make his first lap in it of the season. And it was uh, a young lady there that was that is came from Junior Dragsters. Uh, she races in Super Comp. A girl, a girl named, uh, and I'm, I'm looking because I want to try to say her name properly. Her name is Sarah Moldenhauer. I hope I said your name right, Sarah. Very nice young lady who races Super Comp going to get her license in Chris's top dragster car. So I got up bright and early Monday to go out there and help Chris. Uh, 
had a lot of fun. That was really, really cool. Met Sarah and her dad. And so Chris says he wants to make a test pass just to make sure everything's working because, like I say, he's front half the car. He's done all kinds of work to it. And he said, I just want to make sure everything works okay. And, and I'm going to just, you know, go down through there and maybe click it a little early just as long as everything works okay before we put Sarah in the car. And what does he do? He goes out there, 618, 222 miles an hour. Uh, so that was kind of a heck of a tech test pass, that's for sure. But So then uh, this young lady, she gets in the car and, and she makes, makes a couple runs. It's way faster than anything she's ever been in. I think she told me the fastest she had ever been was 760. And got to tell you from experience, you know, uh, her dad told me, well, she's been 109, 60 foot. And I told him, well, it's a big difference in a car that just went 987, 60 foot. And uh, they were such awesome people, though. But it, it definitely got her attention. And But she did good. You know, she ended up uh, getting her license. I want to think she went uh, like a 650 and a 680, something like that. She didn't quite hit the 200 mark. I know she really wanted to. But they uh, they did a good job. It was fun hanging out there with them for for a little while and get to see them make a couple laps. That was really, really cool. But anyway, kind of the, was a quick rundown of our weekend and had a blast. I kind of, I put up a YouTube video. You guys can go watch and check it out. And some of the stuff that we did over the weekends on there, including my finger, which is fine, by the way, y'all. You can kind of see it's, it's a little, still a little whacked out there, but I actually, uh, Got my stitches out on Friday. I guess I can tell you. I didn't even think to tell you last week what I did do to my finger. But So I work out, have been for the last... Hey, Jeff Foster, you are a little late, and Mr. Michael up church. But So a couple weeks ago, Donna is uh, going to start working out. And I've had all the workout equipment out in the shop. We got a nice shop. Not the race shop, but the shop behind the house back here, my man cave and... So what I did, nothing really cool to tell you what I did to the finger, but uh, moving the exercise equipment in the house, rolling the two-wheel dolly out the door, and it tried to turn over. I tried to catch it, caught my finger in between the door and the exercise bike that I was moving, and so that's what I did to my finger. So I had to go get stitches in it. And so Friday, when I got to the racetrack, I hear Lee saying, sounds like we have a parrot. That is Millie with a squeaky ball, and it does sound like a parrot. She she is relentless on that, but back to the finger. So Dr. Phillip is the official NHRA doctor, Dr. Phillip Surface. He's an awesome dude. Uh, text him, come over and pull the stitches out, and he actually let me video that, and that's on the YouTube thing. Y'all can go check that out, but uh, it was crazy. Fingers starting to get where I can bend it a little bit, but it's still got like a little flap going there. And everybody kept asking because I had this brace on. They thought I broke my finger. I didn't. So I got to tell you how I drive the car, and this finger is not, I didn't think was that important because Dr. Philip Surface, again, being the official NHRA doctor, he had to make sure I was okay to drive and all that. And the only thing I do with my left hand, I said, was drive the car because we have a butterfly steering wheel in the car, and the way I hold the steering wheel, I put my three fingers inside the steering wheel, and I put my two index fingers over the top. So it's kind of like a level. And we were, uh, you know, not going to have to use this finger. So the first time we warmed the car up, I had no clue what I really do with my finger uh, until we tried to start the car. Besides drive it, that's all I really do with my left hand because your right hand's on the brake and you open the chutes with your right hand, so I didn't think it was no big deal, but it was extremely sore, I'll tell you that. And first time we started the car, I'm like, man, I used my finger to flip the brace pack on and turn the ignition switch on, and the reverse shifter is very close to the body panel that's inside the car, and so I couldn't, couldn't reach it very well with the brace on, so I ended up having to take that off. Ended up taking all that stuff off, except for basically a band-aid when I put my big old fire gloves on. So anyway, there's uh, Michael Upchurch. No heroic story there. <laughs> Moving stuff, and as Donna told me, I should have waited and got some help, but I was trying to hurry up and get that stuff done and smash my finger. I had to go get some stitches. I'm going to scroll up through here and see if, hey, I see uh, not only is uh, 
Jolie Miller can watch it, but so is Chris Minipace. I was just talking about you. So let me just scroll up through here and, and see what people are asking. Somebody says, oh, Michael Rutherford, why, I don't know, I don't know what you're saying there. I'm assuming that's why did Grubnick leave the team. Pretty simple. I don't know. Well, because John Force hired them all, that's why. John Force got a lot of money. That's probably the simplest answer to that. Uh, I am just scrolling. Somebody, Michael, asking about my finger. I told my finger story. Not a lot of questions I see on there. I see uh, Michael Rutherford talking about HHRA needs to come back to Memphis. Uh, I don't think HHRA or NHRA will come back to Memphis. I'm not picking on you tonight, Michael. I'm just having fun. I don't think they'll be coming back unless somehow there was a change there. That track is owned by the same company that owns the IHRA. And so I don't think they'll be coming back with that sanctioning body opposition there. I wish they would. I missed the track in Memphis. Somebody's coming to visit me. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know it's Tuesday night and you gotta you gotta get on here too. So everybody, I weighed Millie a while ago and she looks tiny still compared to to the old Igmeister. Iggy is 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 just a big Mini Iggy's on the big size of of the mini mini dog thing mini bull bull terrier deal. Millie is twenty two pounds. She's she's growing. She's finally starting to grow a little bit, but she uh, she's nothing compared to to the old Iggy. Iggy is a whopping forty three pounds. So, all right, I'm scrolling up through here. Who does a burnout in a circle? Brian Allen, I, uh, man, I'm drawing a blank as to what you're talking about there. Burnout in a circle. I don't know. I try to do burnouts anytime and everywhere that I can. Uh-oh, Millie just uh, messed up my screen there. Anyway, guys, I, have, I can't even see my questions anymore now. I don't know what Millie just did here. She's uh, licking on the keyboard and moved everything, but... She is definitely growing, getting big. Now I'm scrolling back up through here. I, I figured out what she did. I don't really see a lot of questions. But anyway, guys, uh, we are definitely getting ready for the Gator Nationals. It will be huge. Last year, the Gators Nationals was probably one of the biggest races that that I have ever attended. Uh, it was the 50th anniversary for the Gator Nationals. And he was, it was just unreal how many people come to that thing. And it was packed. It was packed. And I think we are going to have one of the largest hospitalities we've ever had at that race. And I see Jeff Foster talking about four wides in a month. Absolutely four wides in a month for the Denso Nationals. And our car will have a cool look for that race. And I am definitely ready for that, too, because I love the four wide race. I love the confusion of the starting line. Being an old bracket racer, for me, it is just a lot of fun, you know, with all the all the staging bulbs, all the things going on up there. To I used to let go of the button when you used to look at the opposite side of the tree. So that kind of happens sometimes when you're staging. You look on the opposite side of the tree for your pre-stage and stage beams. Guys, I hope you have had a good night and a good week coming up. And Millie and I are going to sign off for the night. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. It's no race in between now and then, but we'll figure out something to talk about. That's for sure. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the old DNC show. Talking about uh, a little bit of everything. The finger. Talking about rain in Phoenix. And talking about burning a little nitro every now and then. And you guys have a good evening. See y'all next Tuesday.